All right, before we start all this shit, let me just give a little disclaimer, all right? I am not a fucking grandmaster of editing. I have a lot of experience, so I just thought I'd pass this on. So please don't take this as me trying to fucking tell everyone how to edit. It's just tips I've learned over the time I've been editing. Also, anything I mention that is free, I'll put in the description. Um, I'll also be explaining a few things that I might have not explained well also in the description. So... If you have any questions as well, please DM me on Discord. I'll put my Discord tag. All right, so now that's out of the way. Trying to find a song is one of the worst parts about editing because it's so shit. It's just shit. When you're looking for a song, you go on related tracks, and this is where the magic happens. After looking for a while, you might not find something you might. But that's how you do it. But <clears throat> when you're looking for a song, you really just want to imagine and edit to it if you can't imagine an edit to it if you can't imagine a fucking sequence of events on a video game to the song it probably isn't that good of a song to edit to even if it sounds cool you probably won't even be able to make anything good to it that's how you find a song you basically just go on related tracks until you find something that sounds cool or something that you can just edit to you can imagine a sequence to it to install Inspector, you want to open up profileinspector.exe. Uh, you can download this using the link in the description. Uh, I don't know if you need to wait for this to load or whatever, but now type in Call of Duty Black Ops 2 in the top field here. Press Black Ops 2. If it doesn't show T6MP V43 and you're using Redacted, you want to press uh, this button, add an application to current profile. And what it will do is it will add the exe to um, this list of games that will be affected by this profile so now that you got that you want to press import user defined profiles it's the arrow down on the little disc here import profiles and you want to double click the one you want to use press ok wait for this to go green I don't know if you have to wait for it but just do it anyway and then press apply changes a few times if you want to and that's how you install inspector Alright, these are the DX story settings you want to be using. You want to be using Lagerth Loss's codec because it compresses your clips, but it still makes them editable and it doesn't really mess with quality. You also want to be you want to change this to what frame rate you're recording at. Basically, in short, if your game's locked at 30, you want to be recording 30. In the Lagerth Loss's codec settings, you want to press the this button and you'll basically be able to configure it a bit. And all you want to check is multi threading basically uses your threads to compress the video and you want to be using RGB people use these from my experience RGB is fine there's really no difference if you head over to the advanced tab you'll see processing threads put this to the highest it basically lets DX Story use as much power as it wants to actually record and limit video FPS I only use this when shit is lagging when shit is unstable when it's like 20 and then it goes down down to 18 and then 24 and then up and down up and down it won't be smooth to edit so i just put it to 15 and then put the time scale lower basically making the fps high but the record time really slow and that's basically my dx story settings this is what you want to be using all right so when you open up the console you'll see this which goes to the actual console where you can change everything this restores all you've just changed with the console back to what they uh, usually are. This saves it into like a preset for the console and changes all the values back to what you saved it as. This one loads it and loads that preset. This one recovers it. I don't really know what that means, to be honest. Uh, I think it's like a undo button, but I'm not sure. It looks like that's what it is. Pressing this button will uh, get you to change the color scheme, light theme, dark theme, colors pretty cool reset the console resets the console now into the actual console all right so the config tab the first one is basically a set of commands that you can execute or you know send commands to the game using one file usually on bo2 you probably won't even be messing around with this that much you'll probably just have a config and you'll send it send sends it load loads it that loads the file save config saves it as a file so if you've made one yourself single config command is basically this but only one so this one's useful for doing time scale 10 because when you're skipping through the demo the fastest you can always time scale 10 makes it faster and then you can just skip backwards using the arrow keys um so yeah that's what that's useful for and then time scale here you just type in a number for the time scale time scale is obviously the speed so one is normal and then 0 0.5 is half that is quarter etc etc 
boom fog is exactly what you think it is uh fog start i'm pretty sure is how close the fog starts yeah so the lower is this this means the distance right so the distance between the camera and where the fog starts so the higher it is the further away it is distance is how spread out it is i'm pretty sure spread out as in you basically stretch it out and make it thinner and the less stretched out it is the thicker it becomes height is how tall it goes it just changes how tall the fog goes fog base exposure is how bright it is the base far is the far which we i was talking about further away theater green screen green screen is for pov as in the first person if i get rid of this uh, hud you'd probably use this to record it do some cool effects with it it basically lets you separate the gun from the rest of the pov uh you can change the color blue purple i'd probably use blue or green one or the other probably just green green players makes the green the players green depth mat is the depth this is pretty cool that this is actually in the game or like in the console so our brains automatically see this as depth right like uh, like this has depth this isn't 3d this isn't flat but uh p computers don't do that so this basically tells the computer what's far away and what isn't so what's darker is uh what's darker is closer and what's brighter is not that's pretty much how what what depth is remove gun removes the gun remove players removes the players and the gun uh green sky makes the sky green so you can change the sky i guess enable tick i'm pretty sure it's kind of like it remembers the tick so you can remember it so now you know this is where the frag starts and you can go go to this point it's pretty cool all right enable ssco is ssco if you don't know what ssco is it's basically ambient occlusion which adds fake shadows to players and edges so you see the scale basically makes it bigger makes the shadows bigger radius uh spreads it out a bit more so if you decrease this intensity is makes it you know makes the contrast i guess bigger if you configure this it'll look pretty good at the end of the day this is pretty essential for a config to have because it adds a lot of like detail to the player without making it look shit all right now doff basically far blur is the size of the of the doff it's basically how much doff far start is how close to the camera it becomes blurred so if i decrease this it'll now be blurred on the whole screen you won't be able to see it because the far end is really high and basically what the far start and end is it's a buffer zone in between fully blurred and not blurred at all right so the bigger you make this this zone the less blurred it will be and it will go from zero to a hundred so zero to a hundred so if i drag this down it will make it so the fully blurred part of the image gets closer and closer to the camera. You see it gets really blurred. Now if I make it all the way here, it's fully blurred. I don't know if that's a good explanation, but I'll probably roll with it. Now over to sun. Sky transition changes the sky when you're using a sky, a custom skybox. I won't be... It fixes it basically. Sky brightness changes the brightness of the sky. Sunlight direction changes the direction of the, the actual sunlight. So this, the, the left knob changes um, basically how low the sun is and it can go under and fuck up the shadows. And then you have this one which changes just the, the angle of it. I don't really know how to explain it. But this is the one that basically makes it dark if you want it to look like shit. Sky rotation rotates the sky box. Yep. Sky temperature. Lowering this will make it orange. It basically makes it warm. And making it higher makes it blue. Sunlight intensity is the sunlight, not the skybox this time. Changes the brightness of it. It can look pretty cool sometimes. Sunlight color changes the color of the sunlight. And doing this basically whites it out. Alright, now the weapon tab. FOV. This changes the FOV. Gun X, Y, and Z changes the view model kind of like CSGO if you ever play that. Uh, this usually doesn't look that good because when you scope in, it looks like this instead of it being centered on the scope. But to each their own, you might be able to make it look good. Now we got changing the weapon. In my experience, this doesn't even work. Yeah, it changes the gun. This is the player that's using the gun. And then this is to change the gun. This is to change the camo. This doesn't work for me, but... If it does, basically you just cycle through these until you find the one who has a whatever camel this is. And then you go, let's say it's number 6, current weapon DSR. Then you can change the gun. That's how that works.
So that's how to use the console. Now let's get over to advanced dolly cam. Advanced dolly cam lets you rotate the camera uh, using just your mouse and also rotating the camera you couldn't do before this. So this is a huge thing, genuinely by uh, Team A. So what it also lets you do is keyframe FOV, which you couldn't do before. It lets you keyframe the rotation as well. So it's really nice. Also, it lets you save cam path. If you have a cine and shit, you gotta go. You can just load it up again save it and load it uh also let's go to first dolly marker so if you placed a if you placed a cine like this then you go back two times you can go go to first dolly marker and there you are it doesn't really work that well for me but it might work well for you and it might just be me linear interpolation is basically keyframing the rotation i don't know if it's the whole camera the movement of it but it's either that or just the rotation and the FOV, but I like to put it on eased. I don't really see a difference, but whatever. All right, my fucking game crashed. Um, so now you just want to load it. Also, with Team A, not with Team A, um, you want to change the frame rate to 30. Basically, the way it works here is the higher your FPS, the more you move around. Like, me pressing W moves me so much, so if I'm trying to make a cine becomes like this. Change to 30 and I move so much less per keystroke. It's nice. Now you can change the FOV just by using your scroll wheel and holding shift. So shift, scroll wheel, scroll down makes it lower, up makes it higher, right? And then if you let go of shift and only use the scroll wheel, you get to rotate it, which is really nice. You use that for uh, movement and such. That's what the roll mod loader is. You can zoom in, zoom out, and rotate. Rotate is the big thing about it because you can do that before, so that's why it's quite nice to have. Now to the recording part. When you're recording POV, you want to be a, you want to press this, right? Because it lets you customize the the HUD. Alright, now I'm in the demo on podcast, and if you press F, you'll see all of these settings, and you basically just want to turn them off, because they turn this shit on, which looks shit. You can keep kill fit on and off, I'm gonna keep it off, and just turn everything off. So now all you have is the plus 100, and this, you, you can't do this on a normal start film, so that's why you want to do podcast film. So when you're recording a POV, there's not much to really change. The main component of a POV is the FOV. So you see here, CG FOV 87.5, CG FOV scale 1.09. So that means that the field of view 87.5 gets multiplied by 1.09. So you gotta calculate this to figure out the actual uh, FOV. It has to do with the aiming in on guns without scopes, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, you could also just, if you don't really care, you could just do this and do, I don't know, CG FOV 95. There you go. Do 90. 93 uh you basically just want to choose fov based off what you think fits the song fits the atmosphere fits the edit if you want to have a moving edit it's probably a, a good choice to have it pretty high i don't know about this high but pretty high so you can do a lot of pan crop but it's really up to you so that's uh it on recording pov you could mess with the doff i usually just turn it off on povs for recording cines, you want to press start film because it lets you use the edit camera. So when you're recording a cine, there's a few things you need to do. You need to be using the advanced dolly cam by uh, Team A. So here we have advanced dolly cam, AMS console. You can use any console, just use this. This is the main component. So when you're making a cine, a few things before you actually get into it is you want to go into your options and put your max frames per second to from 30 to 60. What this will do is it will make you make it so you move less from each time you press W. So it's just nice because you get way more precision. So when you're making a city, you should already have it planned out. When you're sequencing your edit, you should already have an idea in your head of what the city should look like. If you don't have it planned out, then what I suggest is just going in the game and seeing what happens. Seeing what you can make a cine of and making sure that fits in your edit. Like, okay, he pulls up the gun, that could be a cine. This could be a cine. You don't really just want to be like placing a marker and then, okay, let's try this, you know? Also, just learning to make cines is a gradual process. You'll just get better at it over time. Like, this is not explained very well because I don't know how to explain experience. You just get better at it over time. Alright, a big thing when you're making cines is very everything. As you can see in this clip, you see the first cine I make is low FOV from the ground, and then you see I increase the FOV from the top. And that's just small little things you can do to increase variety in your cines and make it look less boring. 
Another thing is when you're making a cine, you want to match the movement of the previous clip to that cine. So if the previous clip is fucking going super fast forward, you make the, the next cine move super fast forward. Or you make it in some way transition, not just with the velo and the fast effects, but you actually match the movement. And it'll make your cine and just your whole edit look so much more well done because you're actually taking time to make cines for that clip instead of just making cines that could fit anywhere. The next tip is movement. So when you're making a cine, uh, by that I mean, let's say this guy's running. If I then go like this, super fast. Uh, this is a really bad cine, but. Now if you see the movement of the uh, camera now, You'll see it's super fast and it doesn't show anything. I mean, this is a really bad example because he's just running, but I'll try see what I can do here. What you should be doing is if you like, depending on what you want to make a cine of, you just want to make sure that it matches up with the movement and the speed of the game, right? So if I'm trying to make a cine where he goes like this and then he goes around, I'd probably do it spaced out. So like this. Maybe a bit more. Again, this is such a basic cine, but making cines takes time. Making cines takes effort. It takes quite a bit of creativity to come up with different sequences. But yeah, this is a lot better. Just the camera doesn't move that fast. Another tip is I see so many people playing with the tilt of the camera, but they don't actually keyframe it. So it doesn't start like this and then go to this. It just goes like this. And it looks, it looks shit. It looks so bad. So just advice, don't do this please. Instead, do something like this, all right? So you have it centered. Just use the tilt as a tool for adding more movement to your cine. Don't make it into a thing where the whole fucking thing is tilted. It doesn't look good, that's why no cinematographers, videographers do this shit, alright? Another thing is just doff. When you're recording cinnies, use doff. It looks pretty good. Looks nice. See you play with the far end and, and well, there. It looks pretty cool. If you want to do some close-ups, you could, you know, turn up the doff a bunch. Go super close, like this for example. Just, just doff. I recommend using doff. It looks nice. In all the upcoming tutorials, you're gonna see me pull up this console, and uh, if you're wondering what it is, it is Video Copilot's FX console. I'll have a link in the description. It's completely free, but I thought you should know because it's quite useful. You pull it up with Control Space. To start off the editing part, I'm just gonna be talking about how to do it, and then I'm gonna show you how I do it. So when it comes to sequences, for example, pickups, new edit, you see his intro, you see how it transitions throughout all of these cines and that is a really good example of how to do it when you're sequencing you want to have in mind how fast this is going to be how it's going to look with the song and also just how the cines are going to look again this is really hard to just tell you how to do it just comes with experience for transitions if you look at Tafa's chrysalis edit um you see the transitions right transition is not just an effect it's not just a ramping your clip at the end of a shot you just ramp it fast it looks fine but it's it doesn't look great it shows that you don't really know what you're doing so for transitions you want to match the movement of anything with each other so if a shot is going to the right at the end make a cine that pans to the right match the movement to transition it smoothly yeah that's pretty much it now let's get into actually making an edit i got the clip here i got the song Oh, uh, the song is by Audrey, it'll be in the description. So I already have a sequence planned out in my head, so I'm just gonna lay down the markers for it. Alright, so here I have the markers. This is gonna be a shot. This is gonna be a pullback into the, the scope in, and then shot. What's important when you're sequencing to a song is don't just place shots wherever. Please imagine the actual frag. Sort of like an old school console edit, how they'd actually try to show off the frag. So some of the worst stuff you can do is just do a shot and then cut to a cine, do a shot, cut to a cine, do a shot. And they also just don't flow together as well. Don't do that. Uh, what I've done here now is I've done Control alt t to bring up timer map. On the first frame of the clip is a scope. 
Um, and then this point is sort of the middle point of the of the shot. And I'm just gonna put it like here. And then it's gonna ramp up into the scoping. So I'm gonna put it like that, maybe. So now it goes shot fast. And here I'm gonna do it the scoping. Uh, yeah, like this. And then it'll ramp back up again into the scope, like this. Then I'll control shift D this to cut it. Uh, press U to bring the timer map up again. And here I'll go to the shot. Scroll all the way till you're at the scope frame. So this is just going to be shot, pull back shot, right? It's not going to be anything crazy because it's a tutorial. Now we're going to bring this shot up like this you kind of just over time get a feeling for what animations like how long they should last and stuff like that like you don't want the shot to be up here because there's no movement here it's just him pulling the gun but if you show the movement of him like pulling the gun up a bunch it'll look cool so like this now i'm deleting all these other markers so it's only this uh you don't have to do this it just feels so much nicer so i'm copying this and pressing this line which is the rest of the velo here delete it and then paste so then only, you only have this point and then you only have the velo you're actually going to use so we'll start on the last shot because why not that's probably what people are here for the fucking shake and all that shit we'll do velo first though so a way i like to do to judge the velo is just go one frame after the scope and then pulling this up until it's like here you don't want it to be like here on the first shot but it could look good it depends now i'm going over to this midpoint and I'm just gonna drag this down and this is sharp as fuck if you didn't know this is quite sharp so let me just see if it looks good eh I'll probably fix this ramping a bit and then make this smoother this song is quite intense so I'm probably gonna be using ramping a lot but I don't recommend it for everything again you wanna adapt your edit to different songs but here I'm just gonna do it the very classic sharp style cause that's what the song is like yeah, that'll be fine, that'll be fine. Alright, so that's the last shot. Again, we're just doing velo right now. We're gonna add shake and all that later. You wanna make sure it looks good, it transitions smoothly, it's not too sharp, all that stuff. And again, you get a feeling for that the longer you edit for. Alright, I've done the velo now, so now it looks like this. Now let's go over to Pancrop. This type of song I envision with a lot of Pancrop. So we'll start off with just zooming in and out. Uh, Start with the shot, zooming in, maybe zooming it in here and then going back out. So it goes like, it goes zoom out, zoom in and then out. Looks like this. I'm just going to show you how I do it, uh, but you, you want to learn how to do it yourself, obviously, which you learn over time. You learn what looks good to you, etc, etc. For the shot, uh, it's pretty much the same thing. Right now the pancrop on this is pretty basic and it doesn't, it's not like amazing, but uh, it's just to show you a baseline. So I've done the pancrop and it's really basic. Uh, I like to change it after I've added shake again to make it fit more. Right now I'm just doing this because, so before I add shake, let me just explain what shake is. So you have amplitude which chooses how far it can shake. So the more I increase it, the further it can go with this shake. Frequency changes how much it shakes in each direction. Z distance is just in and out. Don't use this. I don't know why you'd use this. Uh, motion blur. Turn it on. It's pretty nice for uh, for impact uh, because it just blurs it in every direction that it shakes, which is nice. Then we have X shake, which shakes it left and right. The random means that it randomly shakes and the wave means that it shakes in a pattern of left to right, left to right. And it just goes like this so that's what random is y shake again random up and down and then wave you want to use wave for most things because it's more consistent and it moves a lot more than random does then you have tilt which rotates it and again random and wave you want to keep the wave maybe lower than the random because it shakes a lot more and that's pretty much it channels you have this which i'm pretty sure just shakes the red yeah i don't i wouldn't use this all right i'll put in what i think it should have so we'll start with x shake put it to like 25 see how that looks quite calm might change it a bit more 
uh, Y shake. I'll change the random Y down uh, because it just doesn't look that good. It doesn't move that much. Tilt, I'll put this to like four, put this to four, change the frequency. You can see it moves a lot. So now let's keyframe it. Press the clock and you want to make sure that the scope frame doesn't have anything on it. Only reason for this is because when you're actually in game sniping, you'll see a frame of black when you're sniping. And if you have this zoomed in, which is the main concern, right? If you have this zoomed in like this, it doesn't really look to the viewer like it's scoped in. It just looks like you did a really bad pan crop. So keeping it 100 just makes it look like a scope frame. So now I'm just going to keyframe the shake. Going to add a bit of shake on the, on the scoping. And yeah, we'll mess it around with it. Right now, I just want to add a lot of movement to this POV. That's why I'm doing a lot of shake. So now I'm doing the last shot, and I'm just going to put in some random settings. And then if it looks bad, I'll just tweak it. All right, so after doing shake, pan crop, and velo, it'll look like this. So I'm doing it quite intense just because of the song. So if I did a different song, I definitely wouldn't do this amount of shake. But because it fits the style, I'm doing it, which is something you should do as well. Don't just use this shake for everything, please. Change it depending on the song and vibe and pace of everything. All right, now I'm gonna add a few effects to make this pop a bit more. I'm gonna start with adding a an adjustment layer and adding directional blur. Directional blur just makes it look a bit, a bit better. Makes it look like it has a bit more movement. Another thing you can do is add some flicker and some tin. So I'll add some flicker here. If you wanna know what I'm doing exactly, just go in the description. There's the project file right there for free. Uh, I'm just skipping past it because it's a lot of boring information. Another thing you can do is add tint, as I said. I don't know, it just adds a bit of color variation, which is important. Now I'm going to add some stuff to this shot, add more impact. And whilst I'm doing this, let me just say, adding impact to your edit is not that important. It's not that important compared to pretty much everything else about editing. So please don't go around thinking you're sick because you have shake settings, all right? So here I'm just adding some exposure which then makes it go bright on the shot so there that's just a few things you can do to the pov to make it better so because this gun goes back like this and he moves a bit to the left um you can use that for transition so here you can see me making the cine and matching the movement with him pulling the gun back um, I also forgot to say that I added a bit of radio blur on the transition. Now I added the cine. Uh, I've also stretched out the ramping. The cine is quite shit, but this will do. It, it has the movement, it's just not framed well. As you can see, I've done the velo. It's the same velo style as I do, as I did on everything else. So, but you see I've made it quite smooth because I want to keep the movement. And if I slow down the movement, then it will look shit. It won't keep the pacing of the rest of the frags. So now, I didn't explain it very well, but I'm adding pan crop because it will add movement to the cine. The cine itself doesn't have that much movement, so I'm just making sure that it adds to the movement of the rest of the edit. Because that POV is really intense. So here, I'm just trying to add more movement to the cine to make it not feel so out of place. So adding a bit of pan crop to the cine will make a bit of movement. You can mess with the rotation, all that stuff. I usually do that. Uh, that's pretty much it for the basics. What I recommend is just messing around with the VLO experimenting making sure that you know you learn something at least because right now making something like this you don't learn anything but it's all about editing different frags editing different games etc and you'll understand more and more and you'll you'll get more ideas in your head so making sfx this is going to be a really basic way of explaining it but basically here i have i basically recorded the preview with shadow play and I've just scaled it in on Vegas and what I've done is I've grabbed the song and I've just matched them up using this shot so I just know it's on this I know the shot is on this sound so I know it syncs up so I'll be linking Tafa's sound effects pack because I don't have one you just want to add the sound effects to the shot so here we go and for this I'd probably add something called a track EQ turns down some frequencies and turns up some depending on what you put yeah let's try something like that here I basically just pitched down some sounds pitch this one even slower because it's a shot and I've added a really silent and slow shot to this cinematic
Here's the whoosh. Can add that to the last shot. And now when you're done with your SFX, you can either render it with the original song or not. I'll do with the original song, I'll just render this, then I'll go here, uh, render as, wave, let's call it something, render. Now you can go into AE and drag that sound file into here and just sync it up with the rest of the song. So now it will sound like this. Alright, so you just made a masterpiece, so if you want to add, you know, CC, all that shit, control A, pre-compose, and move all attributes, press OK. Alright, so after you've pre-composed it, you want to go to composition setting, and you just want to be upscaling. Right now I recorded in 2K, so I guess I'll upscale it to 2160 by 3840. And then you just want to do control A, control Alt F and it will scale everything up. This is one method of upscaling, it's what most people do. So now you can add some adjustment layers and on the bottom one we'll add some magic sharp. I don't use this but it's like quite popular now so I'll just show you the settings I used to rock. Something like this. On the next adjustment layer you want to add lumetric color. If you want to know how I exactly I do it you can uh, go and buy my editing pack but I don't really want to. But yeah, use lumetric color. You want to use the shadow tint, highlight tint, all these adjustments and the basic correction. So, yeah, make it brighter, do what you want. Again, this is just all about experimenting. Uh, another thing you could add is S Glow. This will make everything glow, basically. Put the glow with like 300 and then turn down the brightness. If it's too bright, just, just mess with the brightness and also the threshold could be nice to mess with. So yeah, S Glow is nice and then another one is Flicker. Put it to like 0 0.1 and then maybe a tiny bit of random color for this style I'd probably do it and then put the frequency quite low all right so let me just say that this is what I want to render uh, you head over to file export and I'm gonna use Adobe Media Encoder you can use virtual dub as well all right it'll come up like this uh, I had to actually use a fucking clip because it didn't let me do it on the project but it'll it's the same process so you press this button for the preset export settings here you just want to go to video codec and make sure the format is in AVI, not uncompressed AVI. Go to video codec and you want to be using either XVID or X264 VFW. I'm just going to be using XVID and I'll be using these settings. I'm just going to put the width to uh, 1440. Uh, depending on what resolution you're rendering, you want to change this to what you want to change it to. Field order, progressive, aspect ratio, you want to put this to square pixels. Uh, render at maximum depth, depth 32-bit, and use maximum render quality. Press OK, and then you can render pressing this button. Using depth, we can use that for a lot of things. For example, DOF. So if I'm trying to do DOF, I'll put this depth layer under the green screen. I'll turn it on, and I'll add tint. So we're basically just going to be using this depth layer as a baseline so it's not a, it's not going to be used for anything other than the plugins to read off of so what i'm going to do now is add doff actually before that i'm going to add a key light which is basically chroma key to this screen screen layer make it green boom so now let's do Control alt y and i like to use fl depth of field it's a plugin for depth but that is not free and there is a free alternative. I'm going to be using Camera Lens Blur, which does the same job, except it doesn't really let you keyframe the focus point that well. Now I'm going to be going here, Blur Map Layer, put it to depth, the depth layer. So now it reads the depth layer as the um, as for where to put blur. It looks pretty good. It's so fucking slow though. So now that I got DOF, I'm going to be using Fog. So I'll turn off this this DOF because it's quite intense on my computer and I'll be copying the depth layer using control D copies it then I soloed it and for DOF, for fog let's give it a light green color now if you want it to actually be fog because right now it'll just look like this you want to go to mode and put on lighten but it will look like this it doesn't look good so what you want to do is press T to bring up the opacity and put it down to 15 25, 35, etc, etc, to what looks good. This doesn't really look good, maybe a bit more like that, maybe a bit warmer, like that. Might look cool, might not, 
that's how you add fog. So now I'm going to show you how to mask something out using depth. Um, this could be used for a variety of things on the edit I'm working on. Uh, I used it on pretty much everything to brighten up the skybox because on COD 4 you can't make the skybox brighter. Using commands you have to actually make a skybox that's bright. So because of that uh, I'm going to do something pretty cool. I'm going to copy the world layer and I'm going to solo it. That means all you see is this and I'm going to be adding something called cut. It's called EFX Z Depth Cut. It's not a free plugin, but there is no free alternative to this, unfortunately. I'm gonna be, you know, using this this depth layer. That's our baseline, as I said. Add that. So I've put the back full cut. That means it starts from the camera and moves up and cuts out anything starting from the camera. And I put it all the way to one, and f it actually didn't even take the skybox. So now you have two layers: one which is only the sky, and one that's just normal. So what you can do with the only sky. Add exposure and make it brighter. It's pretty useful for making the sky look better. So now if I, boom, you see the sky is way brighter. You might not notice it, but. So that's how you mask things out using depth. And that's how you use depth on any game. It's not just called for, it's just I didn't want to record on BO2.